Hey everyone, welcome to the next video in the Prima Education series. Today, I want to tell you guys, now that the cycle has officially wrapped up for me, I've heard back from everyone, I'm now just deciding where I'm going to go, I wanted to share with you all five mistakes that I wish I had avoided and that you can most definitely avoid when you're applying to medical school. Mistake number one is being a lone wolf. Don't do it. There's no reason to go through this process alone, whether you're doing it with a friend and they're also applying to medical school and you can lean on one another and vent about the ups and downs, or you have a lot of great mentors in your corner, or even if it's just friends and family who know nothing about the path to medicine, but can just be there for you, use them, lean on them, talk to them. There's no reason you should go through this process alone. It's a lot, it's exhausting, it's taxing and it's emotionally draining, and there's no reason to go through it alone. Mistake number two is to don't underestimate your activities section. So that's something that I did the first time through. I've only applied to medical school once, but when I did a first draft of my activity section, it was very boring, straight to the point, very redundant, and it wasn't until I got some second opinions that I realized you, that's a huge opportunity for you to tell the story of your application process. You are in control of the narrative that you're telling all of the schools that you're applying to. And in, in addition to your personal statement, your activity section is a great place to do so. That's where you can talk about the exact moments that made you pursue medicine and the moments that made you want to continue to, to, to pursue it and the the ups and the downs and the challenges you've been through and the most impactful moments and experiences in your life. And it's a huge, huge part of your application, more so than I originally thought it was when I was applying. And I'm glad I had the support and resources to sort of change gears in, before my application was submitted. But don't make the same mistake I did. Do your research. There's great books out there to tell you how to write it and lots of people who can give you pointers specific to your application. But don't forget to use your activity section to your advantage. Don't underestimate that. Tell lots of stories. Number three, don't wait for secondaries. There are too many websites out there that have the exact replicas of secondaries applications that schools have submitted in the cycle prior. And that way you can take a peek at them. And even if they've changed a little bit, you can start pre-writing your essays. Uh, if you apply to more than 10 schools, that's a lot of essays to write because most schools send a secondary to everyone. So stay ahead of it. There's a nice window of time where your primary application is getting approved and you're waiting to get secondaries use that. Start writing your essays. And even if you don't write them specific to schools, just answer the most basic of questions. Your biggest challenge, why medicine, and pick maybe four or five of the schools that you applied to and write a statement about why that school. You're going to save yourself so much time in the long run. I waited way too long and was stressed. And my average turnaround time was not the two weeks that everyone suggested. Um, it came out to be more like 20 days, but 30 sometimes for certain schools. It all worked out in the end, but don't be like me. Pre-write your secondaries if possible. It'll save you some time and stress in the long run. Tip number four, and it's unique to this cycle and cycles to come. Don't forget the AAMC VITA interview and the CASPER exam. For information about those, you can go to these two sites and you can also use resources at Med School Coach to get specific and incredible advice on how to navigate those. They have great resources. You can talk with admissions committee members face to face or over Zoom, really, but they can give you tons and tons and tons of great advice. Not only are these people physicians themselves who have been through the process, but they are well known in the admissions world and have been on admissions committees themselves. So they know exactly the right answers that you should be given and how to make those answers unique to your application. Definitely don't be afraid to use Med School Coach for your future med school application needs. But back to mistake number four, I procrastinated on taking the VITA exam and the, the VITA interview and the CASPER exam. And I stressed myself out more than necessary. Both of those things are oftentimes required for most schools. Um, the CASPER exam is being increasingly accepted by medical schools. So stay on top of it, do your research and get those done early. Get them out of the way so you don't have to worry about them later and use them as practice for interviews that might be coming up in your application feature. Finally, tip number five, and it's very unique based on you and your application, but it's to not rush. If you're not ready to cycle, don't rush. 
medical school will always be there and you only want to apply once if possible. Lots of people apply many, many times and that's okay too. But it'd be nice if you can spare yourself the expense and the stress. You wanna give this your best shot. And maybe if you were planning on applying this cycle and your MCAT score wasn't as great as you wanted, or you think that your application could be stronger with uh, another year or a couple more experiences, don't be afraid to take the time. There's nothing wrong with taking a gap year or growth year, if you'd like to call it that. Lots and lots of students take them and more and more students are doing so. And medical schools look at you in a positive light for taking that time to adult a little bit, strengthen your application, and come at it with your best foot forward. It will make you a better medical school applicant and will make you a better doctor in the long run. Plus, if you decide to go for it when you don't feel fully ready, you will forever be anxious throughout that entire application cycle. I know that I was originally planning to take a gap year and situations changed throughout my junior year and I decided to go for it. Fortunately for me, my application was in a place that I could still be a competitive applicant and get into the schools that I wanted to, but it's not like that for everyone. And I know for sure, even given my application, I was pretty stressed throughout. I had no idea which way this was gonna go, especially with the COVID-19 pandemic and things coming at us from left and right. Don't be afraid to take the time off or give yourself an opportunity to relax before you throw yourself into the whirlwind that is medical school. I know I have to make the most of this summer before it begins for me. That wraps it up for this video. Just five mistakes that either I made or someone near me to me made and things that you can most certainly avoid when it comes to applying to medical school for you all. In a future video, I can give you a full rundown of my application cycle, all the things I submitted, my stats and all of that jazz. But for this one, I just wanted to give you a quick overview now that this cycle is coming to a close and students are starting to commit to places. April 30th is around the corner. So if you're applying this upcoming June, keep these things in mind and don't be afraid to reach out if you need anything. In the comments below, if you've applied to medical school, maybe drop some of your biggest mistakes or things you wish you could have done differently. And let's pass all that information on to the next group that's applying next cycle. Good luck to everyone and I'll see you in the next video. Bye. Thank you.